Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, maximum distance in arrays. This one isn't super crazy, at least for a medium, I think it's a reasonable difficulty question. The idea is we're given a list of arrays where each array is sorted in ascending order. Wow, they actually gave us ascending order arrays rather than non-decreasing order, that's pretty rare. And so we want to return the maximum distance and the only way that we can compute the maximum distance is by picking an element from one subarray and then picking another element from another array and then calculating the absolute value difference between them. So a couple observations to immediately make. The arrays are sorted in ascending order. So obviously we only care about the minimum and maximums from each array. So we don't even need to look at the entire array. We're only ever gonna care about the min and max from every single array. And we can get those in constant time from each array. You just get the first element and the last element. That's one observation. Another observation is that we can't pick two elements from a subarray or just like one of the individual arrays, I guess. So the most brute force approach to this problem would be nested loops, right? N squared. For this particular subarray, let's say, we would just take the minimum element from that subarray and then go through every array that comes after it and then compute the difference from the max element from each list. And then we would repeat that, except we would pick the max element from the current list and then go through the minimums of all the remaining lists. And then we would repeat that. So for each array, we would only compare it to the arrays that come after it. And that's to ensure that we don't pick two elements from one of the lists. And also, let me kind of show you. Like I said, the brute force is nested loops. So for this array, we'd look at all arrays that are after it. And then for this array, we'd look at all arrays that are after it. Why don't we need to look at all arrays that come before this one and then compare it to that? Because we already did that, remember? We're looking at every pair of subarrays. If we already picked this one, then we went through everything that came after it, which includes that one. So we're gonna use this same logic to get to the linear time solution. Because remember how we only care about the minimums and the maximum. So if we have all of these, we want to pick among all of these, which one is the smallest. So that's going to be far to the left. And then we pick the maximum, which is going to be far to the right. And then you just calculate the distance between those. The problem is you have to make sure that you don't pick two from the same one. So how do we do that? Well, the idea is actually very similar to how we solve the problem two sum in one pass. It's this, we know, like we have this array here, but imagine we had an even bigger one. We know that somewhere in this array, there's gonna be a subarray somewhere and then another subarray. There's gonna be two different subarrays that form the solution. It could be the minimum from this subarray and the maximum from this one, or it could be the max from this and the min from that one. So we'll have to kind of try to compute it both ways. So what am I gonna do? Well, I'm gonna do this. For every array, we're gonna compare it to the minimum and maximums we have collected so far. So with the first array, there's not much to compare, but with the second array, we're gonna say, okay, whatever minimum we have so far and the max that we have so far from all the previous subarrays, let's try computing the result. Obviously, we would get the result by taking the last element from this and subtracting from it the min from the other array. And the other way we'd compute it is by taking the max that we've collected so far minus the minimum from this current subarray. That's how we would update the result. And the min and max we collected so far would definitely not include this array. And then we'd kind of do the same thing moving to the next array. Now we would update the minimums and maximums that we have you know, collected up until this point. And then we'd compute the result this way and then uh, this way as well. We would keep doing that and suppose that these are the two arrays that form the solution. By the time we get here, we would take the max, subtract from it the minimum that we collected so far. Maybe that's what came from this array or we would take the max that we have collected so far, which might have been the one from this array minus the minimum element from this array. So eventually we will find that solution. So by collecting the minimums and maximums that we have seen so far up until this point, we kind of solve the problem in a greedy way. We only need a couple variables and we only need a single pass. So the time complexity is gonna be N, let's say where N is the number of arrays that we're given. Because remember, we don't have to actually iterate through every single one of the arrays. One last tip that I wanna mention, it's not really a tip, I guess, but consider this. The minimums and maximums that we have collected so far are always gonna follow this. 
the max we collected so far is always going to be greater than or equal to the minimum. So if that's the case, when we're computing the result, we're going to do it like two different ways. One is by taking this element. Let's just call that array of n or, you know, I, I don't know, the last one in Python, we're going to do negative one. So that's the last element. And we're going to subtract from it the minimum that we've seen so far. And the other way is going to be by taking the max we've seen so far and subtracting from it the first element in the array. I just want to show you that we actually don't need to compute the absolute value of both of these. Because consider this, what if the first one turns out to be negative somehow, like the sum, this computation is negative. Well, that would only be the case if this number somehow is smaller than the minimum that we've seen so far, which technically, yes, that is possible. So basically, we're saying that this element is less than array or, or the minimum element. So let's say that over here, this could be possible. But if that's the case, then the second one, this one is always going to be positive. Because remember, the arrays are sorted in ascending order. This element is going to be smaller. I guess even if it was equal, it would still be the case. But this is always going to be smaller than that. And if the minimum is less than or equal to the maximum, therefore, this is always going to be positive. And if you were to uh, consider, well, what if this was negative? That would only be the case if this element array of zero was greater than this one. Therefore, this one would have been positive. So that's not really something you necessarily need to know, but it just shows you why we actually don't need to take the absolute value of either of these. I'm going to initialize the result to be zero. That's what we're going to ultimately return. We're also going to keep track of a couple things, the current minimum and the current max. An easy way to initialize it actually is just take the first array here so that we can get that like this. And then we can take the first element from that array. Uh, we can initialize to be the current minimum and we can do the similar thing for the current maximum. We'll get the last element from the first array. These are just some good default values to use since we know that this array is going to be sorted in ascending order. So now we go through every array in the arrays list and we always want to update the current minimum. So we'll always try to minimize it. So current min as well as the smallest element from the current array. And we'll do the same thing or a similar thing with the maximums. This will be the last element in the array. This will be the current maximum. And this will also be the current maximum. And this will be taking the maximum of both of these. But remember, before we update this, we want to try to update the result. So that's going to be set to the max of itself, as well as the two equations I was talking about. So I don't know if I want to make this nested and then put these on a different line, because at that point, this might get a little less readable. So here, I'm going to take the last element from the current array, which we can get like this, and subtract from it the current minimum. The other case is if we have the current max and subtract from it the smallest element in the current array. So this is pretty much the entire solution. I don't know if maybe I should just put this on one line if that's more readable or not, but I'm going to run this to prove it to you that it works. Okay, it would, I swear, if we used this variable correctly, we created a new variable. I guess that's the downside of Python, that we don't need like a keyword to declare a variable. And also, I had a very trivial bug, actually. Remember how I said we'd never want to take the current min and max from the same array and try to like compute the result that way? Well, I literally did that because I started from the beginning of the array, but I already initialized the current min and max from the beginning of the array. So can you think of what I can do to correct this? If so, you're doing my job for me. I should have started at the second element. And so I'll do that like this. Rather than taking a slice of the array, I think it's better to just do it this way, space-wise. Get the length of arrays. And let's set array equal to arrays at index i. So a pretty simple fix, thankfully. And now you can see it works and it's pretty efficient. I think there is one little thing that we can do in Python. I think the max function actually will accept multiple parameters, more than two. So here we actually could have just gotten rid of that and then had three of these. That's the nice thing about Python. So I think this will also work. Yep, as you can see, it does. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io for a lot more. And like and subscribe if you want to see more.